Rav Kook, Selected Letters, still in Chapter 1 on Torah and Science, Letter Number 3. In the third letter to Rav Moshe Seidel, Rav Kook outlines the, philosoph- the philosophical framework for integrating secular and religious knowledge. And uh, this is being recorded in the country in Moshav Amirim, in the north of Israel. By the grace of God, the holy city of Jaffa may be built and established. 13 Tevet 5673. This is the 23rd of December 1913. My precious and dear friend, the distinguished Rav of pure heart and clear mind, Rav Moshe Seidel, may you and your family live a long and good life. Amen. Greetings of peace and blessing. My friend, I need not explain how your letter has both distressed and amazed me. I hope your present confusion is only temporary, and that a fine soul such as yours can rise above all the superficialities of all these perplexities through understanding and straightforwardness. I have always seen a holy obligation to set firmly in the hearts of all those who seek understanding, that Judaism's base is the beginning and the end, and that Torah itself, which is first and foremost the plain meaning of the verses of the written Torah, is constantly finding perfection from the essence of the beginning and end together. The beginning is the longing for the divine, for which any person of mighty soul yearns, and with which he desires to imbue all aspects of his life. This longing is rooted in a most illuminating way in the life of the nation which long ago was designated to raise high this sacred flag in self-sacrifice and tenacious struggle. All refined spiritual aspirations are connected to this noble longing in a lasting bond such that when the longing for God is elevated the other spiritual aspirations are uplifted as well. And the end is life's everyday routine and the inner view of the world that is special to Israel. The end necessitates a great many deeds, mitzvot, and special customs that stem from the mighty divine root of this beginning are influenced by it and have an impact on it. In the same way, a healthy body has an an effect on spiritual life. The Torah at all of of its levels, the uh, Chumash, the five books of Moshe, the prophets, the writings, in its narrative, ethical and statutory aspects, encompasses all of this, both beginning and end. The tradition in general general expresses a great truth that is based on the combination of the beginning and the end. And through this principle, the specifics, the Midrash, Agadah, Mitzvot, are clarified. If those who examine only the details of these matters find certain things difficult, strange or contradictory, why should this be of concern? Is the process of prophecy and divine inspiration such a clear and simple matter? Do we understand their secrets or even any part of them with a clarity commensurate with their sublimity? Can we define their inner objectives? We strive as far as our mind can reach, but what remains close to us? Can this dark place, whose origin is our own dimmed eyes, darken the sun's light in its fullness? A fullness from which we derive vitality and strength? No, my dear friend, leave this path. Do not let such ideas frighten you. Although not every individual can distinguish precisely between what the Torah said allegorically and literally, the nation's clear sense finds the paths, not through isolated proofs, but through general intuition. And if we find in the Torah certain things which other people think were based on the widely accepted opinions of the distant past, but are incompatible with the scientific knowledge of today, indeed, we do not know at all if today's research is absolute truth. And even, and even if it is true. Certainly there is also some important and sacred objective for which certain matters in the Torah needed to be presented, in the commonly accepted description and not the exact one. As is plain in the spiritual concepts and in certain foundations of practice. For the Torah provided for man's evil passions, or to make its words intelligible. This is Rashi on uh, Shemot, Exodus, 1918 and upon all of them appears the living in appears the living endearing divine wisdom divine wisdom dearest friend i beseech you cast off at once all the bonds of the worthless illusions which have emerged from the lifeless harpings and picayune criticism which we absorbed from the gentiles whose savage hands defiled up pure thoughts and ideas 
the clear and encompassing mind and the, sacri- and the sacred flame of pure feeling that are bound by the ties of good deeds and the cherishing and learning of Torah with love. Where the Talmud, reasoning, halakha, agada, biblical text, mishnah or legal, rule, or legal rulings will always light your way in life. And in this lot, full of life and light, you will find much more of the pure truth and righteousness for which your precious soul quests. The nation as a whole is to be trusted with its maintained tradition, which is, commens- which is commensurate with its great spirit and courage, to endure all the waves of history. What are all the hypotheses that come from a secular and materialistic world, compared with the divine lights and at, the zenith of the, at the zenith of their strength? Moreover, the Torah and mitzvot, the practical, emotional and rational, and the nurturing of the good imagination, the footnote, the good imagination, how we imagine the divinity or how we love and fear God, the Torah and commandments nourish that love, fear and reverence. Back to the text. And the nurturing of the good imagination that also accompanies us as a pillar of light in the life of the community and the individual already bear the mark of the highest beginning, the Torah of Avraham, our father. Uh, footnote. The Torah of Avraham, which was given before the Torah was revealed to Moshe at Har Sinai, was not one of practical commandments, but was a Torah of the spiritual beginning, the ultimate love of God, with all the good deeds it entails, that spiritual devotional love of God, the beginning, is the root of the practical end, which is manifested in the practical commandments, such as tefillin, muzuzot, etc. Back to the text. That preceded all the later events. The manifestation of the end, which perfected our character as a great community, and the practical end that is continuously more endeared in a sacred love, commensurate with its revered age and the passage of generations, which subordinated the content of their noble lives to this end. We know the general principles with clarity and strength, and this, together with education and the original spiritual longing, vitalizes the specific precepts. However, we as yet do not know the specific nature of prophecy and divine inspiration, nor do we even know if it can be that there are no contradictions in prophetic and divinely inspired sayings, as is the case in good reasoned lectures perhaps for perhaps the phenomenon, which is beyond our comprehension is also beyond our conditions for perfection, and all its contradictions are in harmony on some level, in no need of reasoned solutions. Nature does not fear contradictions, as does science, since it is incalculably greater than science. This is faith's majesty, is a result of the freest inspection that criticizes freedom itself in the light of the loftiest wisdom. Therefore, my friend, I see no need to get involved in lengthy discourse to solve contradictions, even though this certainly is a worthy pursuit. Expound and inquire and receive reward. This is from... Sota 44a. The main point in life, though, back to the text, the main point in life, though, does not lie here, but in the larger view that aspires to endless heights, to endless heights. From strength to strength and from light to light, he will go with the force of its strength. They just shall live by his faith. This is from Chavakuk 2.4. And with this I close with a blessing of love from my inner heart and soul, that you may be exalted and also rise up and be strengthened in your rampart, in the light of the Torah and in the beauty of understanding, in righteous and straightforward thoughts, and in love for sacred people and all of their meditations. May life's road be smooth and all its, mean, and all its means cleared before you always. May life's road be smooth and all its means cleared before you always, and may we all together see the joyous countenance when God will show his joy upon the holy land. And may the eternal salvation set us on high, and is, as is becoming your refined soul, in deepest friendship. Humbly yours, Avraham Yitzchak HaKohen Cook, Igrot 478.